the airport is officially open and uh, ready for you. But yesterday mm-hmm. we got 402 visitors mm-hmm. down from a peak of 3,500 in, 3,500 out. So we have a long way to go. But it looks like things are working in that part of town. Good morning to Kojo. Good morning to Kokui. Good morning, Good morning Bernard. Bernard. How are you? Looking well. I'm, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready for oh, the day. Yeah? I'm ready. It's yeah. like basically moving from activity to activity. I don't even point, have time no, to think. Point of view was good, though, with the, the Honourable yeah, Minister. Yeah. Kofi Ada. I didn't even ask him about his constituency. Oh, yeah. I forgot to ask him about that. But, yeah, yeah he seemed pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. Anyhow, so what are the people saying, guys? They're saying quite a bit. Daily graphic. COVID-19 hikes debt service cost. Mm. Government re-strategizes for rebound. Deputy Finance Minister is talking about that. Mm. And farmer, 53, kills wife, oh. 50, and commits suicide. Oh, also, MTN versus NCA. Communications Ministry welcomes court ruling. Okay. Now, the Ghanaian Times. Government to clamp down on witches' comes to stop inhumane treatment of persons accused of witchcraft. Mm. The Public Accounts Committee has directed the Cocoa Marketing Company and PPA to retrieve 312,000 CDs from defaulting staff. The story Kokui read is here. Man kills wife, commits suicide. President cuts sword for construction of phase three of five district water scheme at Adaklu. And Daily back page oh, of the Times, mm. KMA to lose 30% revenue due to COVID-19. Yeah. Daily, Daily Guide, Oga kidnapping is our business what? witness tells court mm. yes this is the uh, man who was accused of kidnapping and murdering the takradi girls oh, saying that yeah. nana Parry's tribal agenda claims which tortured with chainsaw those are on the front page of the daily guide and also yeah. rolling set for ndp congress wow yeah. now wow. the chronicle has a chieftaincy dispute story from the um, western region gangsters fire tear gas into chief's bedroom uh-huh. nana jumps from three-story building but rescued by police his eight-month-old baby was also thrown through a window mm-hmm. and this is the big story on the front page of the chronicle Charlie, just like an action what movie happening? what is happening man yeah. Yeah. And yeah, he jumps from three-story but yes. yeah. He rescued was rescued by, by the police. police and his eight month old baby was also thrown through a window because they fired tear gas into their bedroom. Wow. Now, Wasafiasi chiefs demand recognition of Krokoko as Paramount chief, and the Palmer story is also here. All right. Daily Heritage, show us your work. Concerned youth of Asante challenge Kufuado. Uh, Ex CEO and others begin refunding money to state. Security agencies losing respect, and EIB trains reporters in election coverage. Now, the new crusading guide, Ochehene, speaks out on Dom Farsi land dispute. A Japan deal will maximize returns on investment, Bono Public Policy Institute. Ga East Assembly demolishes structures at Atomic Market and government begins construction of 71 kilometer Elembele town roads. The Daily Statesman, NDC appointees refunding stolen cash. Looters of 17.69 million Ghana CDs want to avoid jail. And that's the former venture capital fund CEO, Daniel Duku, is pictured on the front page there. Government to construct safe havens for alleged witches. First Lady commissions health center at Kwame Inum. Now, the ABC News, Chiefs Lambas Mahama over Achim Tribal comment. President Okufuado commissions five piped water supply systems for 69,000 residents of the Volta region. Elizabeth Ohini descends on, quote, all-knowing CSOs. And editorial, NDC must show achievements tracker. The Business and Financial Times, online education not inferior. Government should expedite public open university. This is from Professor Goski Alabi. Mm. 75 police barriers between Tema and Paga pose major threat to trade. Yeah. Renewables growth is an opportunity, not a threat to ECG. All right. I'm sure Kujo will be happy to read about this. ZPay Mobile Money opens flagship branch in Kaswa, a remittance epicenter. Now, the business finder, pensions, ICU, rally support for SNIT to enhance operations, beef up payments, food prices to remain low. This is according to Isoko. And NAFCO, that is the National Food Buffer Stop Company, clamps down on cheating in food supply to schools. Let's go online briefly and we'll then come into the newspaper. So let's start with citynewsroom.com. Closure of air borders resulted in shutdown of airlines and layoffs, according to Kofi Ada. Also, no one will be left out in bailout for clients of defunct fund managers. SEC says $150 fee for COVID-19 tests against WHO regulations. Redraw it now. This is BPS. 
and about 80,000 persons in Greater Accra are classified as both poor and vulnerable. Meanwhile, in other stories, an Akunid Wajima Rollings to be acclaimed flag bearer of NDP tomorrow and Coca-Cola Bottling Company Ghana to lay off workers as COVID-19 hits hard. Now, citybusinessnews.com. Esla welcomes dismissal of MTN suit over market share regulation. Also, prioritize consumers' interest in balancing market share. Imani urges NCA and Cocoa Board institutes measures to reduce losses after 20 uh, after the shortfall in cocoa production. If you go to majoronline.com, this story is still leading. Vengeance is the Lord. <laughs> Private school teachers tell Akufa. I find that quite intriguing. This was leading from yesterday, unless there's a problem with my machine. Also, diplomatic round. Nigerian speaker in Ghana for a two day visit. He was met at the airport by uh, Ghana speaker Michael Quay. Also, Neil and Tivanda Poy assault is an example of Ghana's eroding democracy status. Festus Abuaji. The same person says December 7 may be a violent day. And that's pretty troubling. If you go to Star, 10,900 youth employed under 1D1 if according to Nana B. COVID-19 test fee at KIA, violation of international health regulations according to Bureau of Public Safety. And I'll upgrade one municipality to Metropolis if I win. This is John Mahama. If you go to GNA, Venture Capital recovers monies wrongfully paid to directors and property owners. Also, why residents give former President Mahama a static welcome whilst President commissions a major fair water supply system. All right, let's start with which one? We've got the graphic. Okay. So our debt stock. The Ministry of Finance has explained the increasing cost of servicing the national debt in recent times is due to the shock brought about by the coronavirus disease, COVID-19, which has caused revenues to fall substantially. It said, although the pandemic has dragged revenue down, debt service cost, which refers to the payment of due portions of loans, amortization, mm -hmm. and the interest remained high, okay. resulting in a higher ratio when debt service cost is compared with total revenue. And, and a response the daily graphic the country he said the country's debt stock currently stands at 258.4 billion ghana cities they're hoping to reduce that to 71.6 percent one of the ways they hope to do this is to have low cost debts to retire the comparatively costly high ones so basically mm. boring to pay off yeah debts but so boring at lower interest rates a friend of mine called it smart borrowing yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you know where that ended land landed him <laughs> okay uh. <laughs> smart borrowing <laughs> Anyway, so that's your, the least story in the graphic. What about the, the Chronicle? Yes, Bernard, I, I want us to do two stories mm. from two communities. One mm. is from the Boko municipality. Misiga residents accessing health services in kiosk. Mm. Oh. I'm reading this story because the past two weeks we've been talking about infrastructure mm. uh, um, achievements of the various governments. Mm. Now, this, res uh, this story says residents of the Misiga electoral area in the Boko municipality of the Upper East region mm. are accessing healthcare services in a kiosk hmm. mm. due to the lack of a community-based health planning services compound. Mm. The electoral area has two major communities, Misiga and Zogo. Now, while a kiosk is being used to deliver health services at Misiga, the health workers for Zogo community operate on the veranda hmm. of the primary school wow. in the area. Mm. And the residents of the electoral area said the situation was affecting quality health service delivery, especially for pregnant mothers and lactating mothers. So while the two major political parties talk about their achievements, mm -hmm. they should also be thinking about some of their major failures in delivering proper services to yeah. people like in this particular area. What's the second area. one? Now the second one is from the Western Region. Mm. The Western Regional Security Council on Tuesday met the entire Dumping Pepesa community following a chieftaincy dispute that forced the chief to jump from the top floor of the three-story palace to avoid being attacked by his assailants. Wow. Mm. The attackers had fired tear gas into the top floor of the building after failing to break the doors at the second floor of the building. That would have taken them to the sleeping palace uh, place of the chief. Mm. The eight-month-old baby of the chief was also thrown through a window to avoid the oh, people Charlie. from getting access to the child. Now, the meeting, which was led by the regional minister, Kobi Ochidako, was aimed at bringing down the tension in the community to ensure lasting peace. And the story continues that um, the palace was partially burnt last week Wednesday hey. during the execution of a court order for the chief mm. to vacate the building. And it goes on and on and on 
to narrate what is about. happening. Mm. All right. Um, the gender minister, you know, recently she's come under quite a lot of criticism. Mm -hmm. Some people say she fails to act when they feel she should mm. on certain issues concerning the less privileged mm. in society. Well, she's been working quite a bit on a couple of things. Gender ministry rescues 611 human trafficking victims. Mm. And also they formulate a policy to protect alleged witches. Okay. So these are a couple of stories in the graphic as well. Mm. The Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection has in the past year rescued, supported and given care to 611 victims of human trafficking in the country. Mm. This it has been able to successfully execute following the government's release of a million Ghana cities to the Human Trafficking Fund to effectively combat the menace. The ministry has also stepped up its education and sensitization campaign to raise awareness of the menace and irregular migration issues, including training um, some police officers to be able to combat the so that's issue. That's the first one. That's the first one. Now, for protecting alleged witches, mm -hmm. the ministry is to draft a policy to safeguard the rights of women branded witches in their communities. The minister said a bill would later be put together for the consideration of cabinet and subsequent approval by parliament. Quote, parliament is currently on recess. We'll start the process as soon as it resumes. For the time being, the ministry has put measures in place to protect such women and ensure that people who abuse them are arrested. In relation to places referred to as witches camps, Mrs. Morrison said the facilities will not be shut down, but they'll rather be renovated to serve as havens for alleged witches, explaining the decision was due to the unwillingness of suspected witches to return to their communities for fear of being lynched. Also with the ministry, um, she also touched on the school feeding program, and she said that nearly 3 million people from more than 8,000 schools across the country had now been enrolled into the program. Mm -hmm. And right. school feeding... The National Buffer Stock Company has clamped down on cheating in the supply of food to schools across the country. <laughs> and the story is that um, distributors sometimes would send packages which are less the the the, the weight they have to send. Mm -hmm. So the NAFCO has supplied 800 weighing skills to the Ministry of Education okay. to distribute to all schools across the country so that they can weigh the food items properly before they take them in. And if you remember, there was a story we read two weeks ago about stolen beans in oh. the cocoa front, oh. <laughs> where cocoa farmers are also saying that they are being cheated. Sometimes the people adjust the skills okay. and they will take Since one you're on cocoa, kg of cocoa. Let me jump on kg. this. Yeah. Uh, there's a story on City Newsroom. We've put measures in place to halt revenue loss. Cocoa Board tells PAC. The Ghana Cocoa Board has assured that although the company recorded significant loss of revenue in 2014-2015, actually 2015-2016, it has put measures in place to ensure that the trend is reversed. Cocoa Board lost about 216 million cities in revenue during the period under review, a situation it has greatly, it said has greatly affected the company's fortunes. Now, speaking at the Public Accounts Committee sitting or hearing in Parliament on Wednesday, the Deputy Chief Executive, Ray Ankara, used the opportunity to highlight some reasons that, that accounted for their poor performance. And then he explained what happened in 2014-2015 and says the company has put measures in place to prevent that from repeating in 2020. Now, let me tell you somewhere, take you to the financial sector. No one will be left out in bailout for clients of defunct fund managers, uh, SEC clarifies. Now, no customer will be excluded in government's bailout package for persons whose funds have been locked up in the 53 fund management companies uh, since November 2019. This assurance was given by the SEC in a statement. Now, earlier indications suggested that customers of Black Shield Management Limited and three other fund management firms would not benefit from the package because such companies were challenging the revocation of their licenses in court. This led to agitation among clients of the affected companies. Some of them picketed at the premises of the Ministry of Finance on Friday, September the 1st. But the SEC in a statement on Wednesday, September the 2nd, clarified that its earlier statement announcing the bailout package had been misconstrued. Here's a quote. We wish to assure all affected clients that the government bailout package is all-inclusive Provided claims have been validated and liquidation orders secured, the SEC reiterates the fact that there is no plan to exclude any group of customers. And as indicated in our last press release, the rollout of the government bailout will be done in phases. The SEC said more on this later on during the show today. Right. Okay, so let me take you to some very, very good news. Mm. It's so cool. It's Before that, yeah. I heard something about venture capital people paying money back. Oh, yes. I thought that was interesting. It is interesting indeed. So mm. the Venture Capital Trust Fund has revealed that six former officials and board members during the Muhammad-led National Democratic Congress administration, including former Keta NDC Member of Parliament, fraudulently awarded themselves loans totaling 14.7 million Ghana CDs using phony companies as the vehicle to siphon the funds 
because this story oh. is in the Daily Guide. The officials mm. are Daniel Duku, who was the former CEO, Richard Lasse Agbenyefia, who was the former board member and former MP for Keta, Irene Anti Mensa, who was personal assistant to the CEO, Frank Abwaji Mensa, who was the husband of said personal assistant, and Kofi Sapong, an investment officer. The CEO of the venture capital fund, Yao Subrimpong, made the disclosure at day two of the public sitting of the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament yesterday. He said for the Auditor General to state in its report that the six institutions which venture capital granted loans to could not even be located was an understatement of the number of institutions involved. There's a lot going on. But yes, the this is the story. The GNA's the angle is rather different. Mm. Basically, says the chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, James Aveji, could not hide his anger when certain names repeatedly came up in connection with wrongful payment from the VCTF. Mm. The chairman urged the CEO, Osu Brempong, who gave evidence before the committee to mention other names identified in financial infractions at the fund rather than a few whose names kept coming up. Probably the names you just mentioned there. So that's the story from that side. Could you? Now, there is good news for all of us. Mm. Food prices to remain low. This is according mm. to Soko. All right. You know we are in the harvest season, right? Mm. But it's not raining, really, no. It's so the next planting Look, season, no. Bernard. That's the matter. Yesterday, I mentioned two of my farmer friends. Another one called me that about 40 acres of vegetables, mm. no action, no rain. Anyway, because of COVID, we've not been thinking and talking about the weather, but it's actually yeah. a big issue. Anyway, so I will give you the story and give you something on the weather. Mm. Commodity prices will continue to fall this month. All right, a Greek research firm Isoko has projected. Okay, and according to Isoko, this is because it is still the harvest season for most of the commodities grown down south of the country. Nice, and this is going to increase the volumes that are supplied to the market, causing prices to fall. Mm. Isoko reported that at the end of trading in the month of August, there was a general drop in commodity prices. Now, listen to this. Tomato prices dropped by 41% wow. to close at 330 Ghana cities per crate. Mm. Puna. Prices dropped... Puna. By, no, yes. you didn't say about Puna, which is puna the class yam. prefect of yams. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's why you say is, Puna. The is. class prefect of yams. <laughs> <laughs> Saw a drop of 9% uh -huh. to close at 815 Ghana cities per 100 tubers. Mm. The price of gari dropped, um, fresh cassava dropped, a bag of maize also dropped. So we are seeing um, a drop in a lot of things. Now, local rice, the average price for a bag of local rice rather went up by 4.99% to close the month at 363 mm. Ghana cities. So this is very good. So local rice mm. also went up. Yes, local rice went up, but the um, pona. Tomatoes Could it be because of the stories you read last week? There was two stories. One story was from BC Rice Valley. They are not getting chemicals to do their yeah. weed things. Okay. And then in the North Ketu, they are also having problems with water. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it may mean that we are not harvesting rice now. Yes, yeah, so yeah. production so may be lower and therefore prices go higher. Right. Yes. Now okay. on the climate thing you mentioned, okay. let me link it to the story. Um, the business finder has a story on that Ghana commits to implementation of priorities on climate change. Mm. And the story says Ghana has demonstrated strong commitment to implementing some 31 ambitious climate change actions in the prioritized sectors. Mm -hmm. These include agri, transport, forestry, energy, health, waste, water and gender to achieve the goal of the Paris Agreement. Speaking at the launch of the program in Accra, the Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Kabna from Paul Mbwating, noted that in Ghana, in 2015, Ghana submitted the nationally determined contributions to the Secretariat of the UN and Ghana is working on achieving this so that we All can right. have a sustainable country. All right. So with regard to food, as mm -hmm. you mentioned before, we need to pay attention to this. Ghana Standards Authority hits markets with aflatoxin campaign. Hey. The Ghana Standards Authority has begun a campaign to sensitize food sellers and consumers to mechanisms to prevent aflatoxin contamination and its negative impact on human lives. Now, the dangers of aflatoxins, according to the World Health Organization, aflatoxins are poisonous substances produced Used by certain kinds of fungi that are found naturally all over the world. They can contaminate food crops and pose serious health threats to humans and livestock. Mm. When aflatoxin contaminated foods are consumed, they present health challenges that include liver cancer, mm. damage to fetuses, mm. stunted growth in children, 
immune suppression, and in extreme cases, it can also cause death. Mm. Also, when food with aflatoxins are consumed, they can cause even cancer. And it's not always due to hepatitis B that we see certain things in our hospitals. Mm. It's through contaminated food. So we should all be careful about the food that we consume and how it's handled. Now, there's a story here on my journal line, which is interesting. Diplomatic around Nigeria speaker in Ghana Mm. for two days. Visit story says the speaker of the House of Reps in Nigeria, Femi Bajabialamila. (laughs) <laughs> is at the head of a high-powered Nigerian delegation in Ghana for a two-day visit to the parliament. His counterpart, Professor Michael Kwe, was at the airport to meet the delegation on arrival. They expected to hold talks on matters pertaining to relations between the two countries following the implementation of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center Act 865. Now, setting the tone for the visit when he welcomed the Nigerian delegation, Professor Kwe said, Ghana and Nigeria are like tongue and teeth, and although they may offend each other, they also derive great pleasure from the benefits of coexistence. He reiterated how important it is that the good relations between the two countries be maintained at all times. Don't forget, Information Minister wrote a letter to respond to uh, one written by his counterpart accusing Ghana of, mm. I call it diplomatic mm-hmm. breaches and harassment of Nigerians. Yes. So I suspect that's what will be discussed there. Then a couple of things about December 7. Festus Abadji has been interviewed and he says December 7 may be a violent day because of the sound of things we're seeing. He was commenting on the attack on Neil Ante Van der Poy. Mm. And so let me give you the second story. First, it says, Neil Ante Van der Poy's assault is an example of Ghana's ruling democracy. Security analyst versus Abouaji uh, says the alleged assault against Odoluyu MP Neil Ante Van der Poy shows the state of democracy in the country. Speaking to Join News Wednesday, he said if indeed the accused persons were national security operatives, then the agency had wrongfully claimed for itself unconstitutional functions. Then he goes on to say, <coughs> Uh, he fears election day, December 7, may be a violent day. He said, considering the current political atmosphere where various attacks are being launched on political opponents, the day which is expected to be peaceful on the contrary will be violent. My sense is that December 7 is not going to be a quiet day. And if and it will not be a quiet day because people have already strategized that between now and then, they will resolve all issues, if need be, through the use of force. He told hmm. Kojo Yangsin on the Super Money Show. Okay. So that's something for you to think about. Now, we have a statement from the Ochehine on the Don Fase mm. issues. All right. And I'll just read three paragraphs of this particular statement. Mm. The Ochehine says that the Don Fase incident has has not the knowledge and or acceptance of His Majesty Osajifu Amoti of a painting. We wish to state unequivocally that Bath was upon Kuma and Kuma is not the Impuniahini of Achim Ibuakwa. He who is, is not he? the chief from Achim Ibuakwa mm-hmm. who is said no, no, I mean, he he's not the Impuniahini, so what is he? He is not recognized and accepted as a chief or a holder of any traditional authority in Achim Ibuakwa. He acted as a land guard wow. in furtherance of his illicit and criminal profession related to unlawful sand winning. Oh, it means they know about it. Unauthorized mm-hmm. sale of lands and violation of the order and enforcement of the public policy, which has been his hallmark. Wow. He has time without number disrespected someone to appear before the Chibi Executive Council to answer queries regarding his nefarious activities. Wow. This point is to effect is to the effect that Osajifu dissociates himself from the criminal incident at Don Fase. Hmm. Further to this, it must be made clear that there is no authorized associative responsibility to the person of the Ochini. So right. Ochini has removed himself. Yet he was able to get yeah. military to do anyway. So where did he get the support yeah. from? Mm. That's that's the question. Okay. Business and Financial Times. A couple mm. of inter- interesting stories here. Mm. One that I know Kujo will love. Mm. One that we all love. Mm. Online education, not inferior. Government should expedite public open university. Professor Goski Alabi is talking about this. Mm. President of the Lawe Open University, Professor Goski Alabi, has called on government to expedite institution of the public open university stating that is the prudent thing to do in light of the disruptions to university learning caused by COVID-19 and also it aligns perfectly with the ongoing digitization agenda Mm. she argued that the perception of e-learning particularly at the tertiary level being substandard vis-a-vis traditional methods is erroneous as online learning offers many advantages over in-person meetings she spoke to the BNFT about this now renewables growth it's an opportunity not a threat Mm -hmm. 
to ECG. Last yes. week there was a very bizarre story that the growth of renewables was going to threaten. Mm. It's going to threaten. <laughs> <laughs> well, the growth of renewable energy in the country should be seen as an opportunity, not a threat to viability and future growth of ECG, the largest distributor of power. This is from the Institute for Energy Security. The IES believes that renewables, such as solar and wind power, must rather be seen as presenting healthy competition to the traditional power systems or sources, and government must step up its efforts at increasing renewable energy in the country's energy mix. Renewable energies are presenting themselves as a superior alternative to thermal power plants fueled by hydrocarbons. Mm -hmm. Businesses seeing electricity cost as a key element in their operational cost will definitely advance towards the cheap energy sources. So it's in the in interest yeah. of government to have Let me less give you electricity costs. Political story. John okay. Mahama is in Wa and the story here is on Star FM online. I'll upgrade one municipality to metro policy if I win. The former president John Mahama says the future NDC government will upgrade Wa municipality to a metropolitan status. Mr. Mama announced this at the forecourt of the Wana Palace when he addressed the chiefs and people of the area as part of his campaign tour of the Upper West region. Then, a couple of quick ones. Closure of airport led to job losses, according to Minister Kofi Ada, speaking on the point of view yesterday. He said the closure of Ghana's airport borders or air borders gravely affected airline operations in the country. He said some airlines were compelled to shut down and lay off staff over the issue. Mm -hmm. Talking about layoffs, Coca Cola bottling company says they will also lay off workers. As COVID-19 hits hard, mm. a number of employees of the Coca-Cola bottling company of Ghana will soon be discharged of their duty. This was announced in a statement signed by Business Unit Managing Director of West Africa, uh, Felix w of WAC, Felix Gomez. Yeah. According to the statement, this declaration of redundancy has come about due to challenges faced by the company over the years, exacerbated by the COVID-19 scourge and the numerous industrial actions yeah. experienced in the last few months. KMA is expected to lose 30% of their revenues due to COVID-19. And the MCE says that the assembly has been losing revenue every year, but this year um, is, is going to get worse because of revenue losses due to COVID-19. All, right. All right, thank you very much. That was the newspaper Review. Coming up next is the City Business News. Stay with us. This is the